Well, hello, hello everybody, and welcome to uh, another video. Several months ago, I put together a video about camera gear and whether the equipment you use inspires you to get outside and make images, or whether you see equipment just as a means to an end. Is gear just a tool to get the job done? Now, from my perspective, it's a bit of both. Now, I realize that equipment is ultimately only a tool, but at the same time, I do thoroughly enjoy using good quality gear. And yes, to some degree, the kit that I do use does inspire me. Now, I'm not particularly interested in deep diving into the tech behind the gear or delving into all the minutiae of a particular product. It, it just doesn't excite me that much. What does inspire me though, is getting outside and using that equipment to its full potential. Uh, I really enjoy searching for good light and I also really love resolving complex compositions in the field because uh, that's what really excites me about photography. Now, you may have noticed that I haven't done many camera reviews on this channel. And one of the reasons is that I've just never really thought of myself as being exceptionally knowledgeable about the technical side of photography. And most of the time, I think that my viewers know more about the tech aspects of gear than I do. Uh, the usual scenario that I follow when I do purchase a new camera is I'll take it out of the box, stick a lens on it, turn it on, put everything into manual mode, and I'll fumble my way through the menus until I get something right. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a terrible way to work, but remarkably, it does work for me and has done uh, for the last three decades of photography. So imagine my surprise and delight when uh, Hasselblad contacted me and asked if I would uh, like to talk about their new camera, the 100 megapixel Hasselblad 907X and the CFV 100C digital back. Try saying that 10 times over. <laughs> but of course I, I said yes, and I'm really excited to share this latest edition uh, in the Hasselblad line with you guys today. Now, throughout my 30 odd year career as a photographer, I've used almost every type of camera and format out there. However, the one camera manufacturer that has somewhat eluded me is Hasselblad. Now, don't think for one second that I've never lusted for a Hasselblad. Uh, actually, in the early 90s, I did actually win a Hasselblad 500 CM through a photography uh, contest run by the now long defunct Canadian photography magazine, Photo Digest. The sad part of this story was that I was just starting out as a professional photographer and I desperately needed the money, so I sold the camera even before I put one roll of film through it. For me, Hasselblad cameras have always been synonymous with functionality, durability, and definitely elegance. Hasselblad cameras are, in many ways, a piece of art within themselves. Now, a moment ago, I asked if camera gear can instill inspiration, and I think Hasselblad has done an excellent job at doing that. Even the packaging and presentation of this camera is really impressive. I almost didn't want to uh, ruin the box by removing the camera and getting my grubby hands on it. In the box, you will find the 907X camera body, the CFV 100C digital back, a hot shoe bracket for either a flash or a wireless trigger, a focusing screen mask, the beefiest USB cable that I've ever seen, a connection cable for lens and flash, a manual, and of course, a stylish Hasselblad camera strap. With a 43.8 by 32.9 millimeter back illuminated sensor, and at only 460 grams without the battery, the Hasselblad 100C digital back combined with the 907X camera is currently the smallest and lightest medium format camera on the market. Uh, in actual fact, it's even 80 grams less than the previous Hasselblad CFV 50C digital bag. So what does this mean for me? Well, I'm not getting any younger, and whenever I go into the mountains or on longer treks, I'm always trying to cut down on that weight. So I would seriously consider bringing this camera along for the ride. I think many photographers will appreciate some of the other notable features of this camera. Now, unlike the Hasselblad 907X 50C with contrast uh, detection autofocus, this version has phase detection. And that covers 294 zones spread out over the 100 megapixel sensor. 
The 100C also has face detection, which I know will be a huge bonus to those of you that enjoy photographing people. Uh, the double SD card slots found in the Hasselblad CFV 50C back are now gone and have been replaced with a single CF Express card slot. And wait for it, an internal one terabit solid state drive. So if you're like me and a bit forgetful, the internal storage is a great bonus either as a standalone drive or used in conjunction with the CF Express card. I think it's a great idea and uh, I really wish that more camera manufacturers would offer the same thing. Probably one of the most unique features of this camera is that if I had kept that Hasselblad 500cm that I had won over 30 years ago, the 100c digital back would work seamlessly with that body. Not only does the 100c work with the V series cameras such as the 500 series and the 200 series, but it can also be used on a technical camera with a V series plate adapter on the back. So in the long run, my initial high investment would still be as valid now as it was 30 or so years ago. And at the same time, it would almost mimic the same experience as using my original film back. Okay, now I can't do much with this camera without a lens, so Hasselblad was kind enough to send me the XCD55 f2.5 V lens, which is equivalent to a 43 millimeter on a 35 millimeter format camera. Again, the packaging and presentation of the lens are second to none. I, I particularly like the simple design of the lens, especially uh, the, the color that transitions from manual focus to autofocus. I should mention that the 907X body and digital back are compatible with the uh, XCD, HC, HCD, V system lenses, and even X-Pan lenses. Now, with some of these lenses, you will need to purchase an adapter, and some will only function in manual focus. But again, any investment you made with Hasselblad lenses from the past can still be used with this camera, and I think that is pretty cool. Another piece of kit that Hasselblad sent me is the hand grip. Now I must admit, if I were hiking any distance with this camera, I'd probably leave the grip at home. But if you do a lot of handheld shooting and want to access the camera's functions really quickly, then the grip is definitely a, a bonus. Okay, enough tech talk. Let's see what this camera can do out in the field. A few things that I should mention. It's probably become quite apparent that this camera doesn't have a viewfinder. Well, it doesn't, but it does. Uh, Hasselblad does offer an optical viewfinder that attaches to a small bracket on top of the camera, but it is made for wider lenses such as the 21, the 30, and the 45 millimeter focal lengths. Whoops, I made a bit of a mistake there. Hasselblad has also developed a new optical viewfinder with markings for the XCD28P, XCD, 38V and XCD 55V lenses. Okay, carry on. So all the work is done with the 2.36 million pixel by 3.2 inch rear screen that also tilts 40 degrees and 90 degrees. It's cool because it reminds me of the old waist level finders on the Hasselblad film cameras, such as the two and the 500 series. I must admit that this is the only uh, part of the camera that I'm not sure about since I'm so used to using a viewfinder, but let's see how I make out. Another camera aspect that hasn't changed from the 907X 
F50C is that it isn't weather sealed. Now, to be honest, I have never had a problem with cameras that are not weather sealed. Until my more recent cameras, every camera I've owned was not weather sealed. The key is to take reasonable care when you're out in the field. And if it is raining or blowing a hoolie, you might want to consider uh, just covering your gear up. And honestly, even if my gear is weather sealed, I still try to protect it uh, from the rain and the weather. I'm not having an awful lot of luck here. I've only taken one photograph so far. Uh, I've done a lot of walking though, which is good, uh, get me fit. Uh, the problem I'm having is the light is not terribly exciting. It's a little bit flat. I have photographed this scene uh, several times before, uh, but what I'll do is I'll take a photograph of it and I'll upload uh, the raw files so, so that you can download them and have a look at the details and the colors and so on. But before I leave, uh, one of the first things I noticed about this camera is its simple design. Now, there are only five buttons on the back, and on the front we have the shutter button and a control dial, as well as one small button on the side that toggles the function of the control dial, so that you can either use it to change the aperture or the shutter speed. I really love the simple approach to the menu, and so far I think it is fantastic because it mimics my simple philosophy towards landscape photography. As I've said many times before, in the field, I like to keep things as simple as possible. Uh, perhaps in some ways more in line with traditional photography where light and composition count, not after the fact behind a computer. Now, much like using a larger format camera, this camera slows me down. The menus offer minimal customization. They provide the bare essentials, which I really love. Now, I realize that some of you will dislike the oversimplified menus and customization, but for me, I think it allows the user to concentrate on the art of photography and not so much on the function of the gear. Also, unlike the previous 50C digital back, Hasselblad has decided to eliminate the video function, and I like that as well. This is a camera made for photography. Right, I'm uh, back in my office and uh, I'm really eager to have a look at these files from the uh, 100C and the 907X. So let's have a look in, uh, in Lightroom. Now I should mention that I will leave a link below uh, this video so that you can download the RAW files for yourselves and have a closer look. Predictably, the quality of the files produced by this camera are beautiful. What I'm looking for in RAW files is color rendition. Now, before I made this video, I did review a number of other YouTube videos that looked at the uh, Hasselblad X2D, since it has the same uh, sensor as this version of the 100C. So it's no surprise that the files are beautiful. And what really excites me about the Hasselblad files is the natural colors that this camera produces. Now, of course, once you've downloaded a file, you pretty much have carte blanche on what you do with them. But I do think it is essential to start off with an accurate file to start with as the basis. Now, this camera only has one color profile called the Hasselblad's Natural Color Solution, but it is a beauty. Something to keep in mind is that uh, this sensor is large. And of course, if you take uh, the back off frequently, you are going to get dust on the sensor quite quickly. So I do have to apologize for the numerous dust spots on some of the photos, especially the ones of uh, the raging waterfall. Uh, it's pretty embarrassing actually. <laughs>
So who is this camera for? Well, from my perspective, I do think it would uh, easily find a spot in my camera bag. Uh, the camera is certainly light enough. The rear view screen over a viewfinder will take me some time to get used to. Uh, primarily because I wear reading glasses, so I have to keep taking my glasses on and off. But having said that, uh, it is extremely bright, it's very large, and it renders the scene in front of you beautifully. So I do believe that this camera would be great for landscape photography, both in the wild and on the street, also architecture. Uh, the camera would be great for still life objects, and I think with the improved autofocus uh, and face detection, it would really do well for both studio and environmental portraits. Now, if you are a photographer who likes to move quickly and is looking for a fast shooter, then this probably isn't the camera for you. Lastly, the price, as I'm sure many of you are curious. Well, it is a Hasselblad, and as expected, the price is quite high. It's $8,000 US. But one thing that you should take into consideration is uh, it is a premium product and it's not only great to handle, but the images that you can produce are second to none. Thank you ever so much, folks, for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave me the old thumbs up. If you do have any questions about the, uh, the Hasselblad, please leave them in the comments down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. All right, until next time, thanks ever so much. Bye-bye.